wow, hello. Okay, we're going to go over some old properties of exponents today, including multiplication, division, uh, raising a power to a power, and zero and negative exponents. So the first property is anything to the zero power. Is equal to one. The exception is like zero to the zero power is undefined, but I'm not going to test you on the trickeries of it. Anything to the zero power is one. Uh, now, negative exponents are a problem. So if you see on A, two to the negative third, you can't leave that for a final answer. So the way you make a negative exponent positive is you put it on the other side of the fraction. So two to the negative third is like over one right now. So to make it positive, you bring the two to the negative third to the bottom, and you make it to the positive third. Great, so move your negative exponents to the other side of the fraction. Um, now two to the third is eight, so we would have one over eight. Here, five to the zero, oh, anything to the zero power equals one. Now, if, oh, this is perfect. Kind of. This will almost illustrate my point. If I had negative 5 in parentheses to the 0 power, all of this is to the 0 power, which, which would give you 1. Whereas if I just have it like this, negative 5 to the 0 power, technically the order of operations take over and you would do the exponents first, and then it's like the opposite of 5 to the 0 power. So if it's not in parentheses, it's going to be negative 1. That's one curveball they could throw your way. So if you look at C and D, these are very similar problems. But this one is in parentheses, and this one is not in parentheses. When it's not in parentheses, it's going to turn out negative. It's like the opposite of this. So we'll do D first. The opposite of 3 to the negative 4. So to make it positive, you put it under a 1. And then the negative kind of hangs out here. Now 3 to the 4th means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So this would come out to negative 1 over 81. Whereas this one, it's in parentheses. So that means the negative would be there all four times. So this would be written initially like this. Which means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. It's an even number of negatives, so they'll all cancel out and become positive. So this would just come out to 1 over 81. So if it is in parentheses and it has an even exponent, it would come out positive. If it has a negative and it's not in parentheses, even or odd with the exponent, it's still going to come out negative. So let's try, I think I've got 4 here for you to try. Why don't you pause it, try it, and then check I'm going to go over these right now. So try them out. This would be 1 over 10 to the 4th, which could also be 1 over 10,000. Negative 2 to the negative 4th would be written as 1 over negative 2 to the 4th. It's an even number exponent, so that would cancel out all the negatives. Let's see. 2 to the 4th. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So 1 16. Whereas this one, it's in parentheses, but it's to the 5th power. So it'd be looking like this initially. If it has an odd exponent, it's still going to come out even. Or sorry, it's still going to come out negative. So this would be like 1 over, and 2 to the 5th is 32. 1 over negative 32, and it's fine to write it like that. But typically, you write the negative in the numerator. Negative 1 over 32. Or you can write it out in front. Negative 1 over 32. These are all good. You can have 1 over negative 32. It's just not proper how it's written. All right, over here. Negative 2 to the negative 5. Very similar to C, but it's not in parentheses. So it's like the opposite of 1 over 2 to the 5th. So this one would still come out to negative 1 over 32. Again, where it really matters is when the exponent is even. That's where it makes a huge difference. So let's try this next one. 
Call first by now. Ooh, evaluate them. X to the negative first for x equals 2. So I personally like to move everything where it needs to go, and then I substitute in. It doesn't make a difference, but sometimes you'll save a little bit of writing. So like x to the negative first, to make it positive, you'd put it under a 1. And that would be 1 over x to the first. But you don't write the 1 on the exponent there. You, you could, but you just don't. Now we can substitute in 2 for x, so it'd be 1 over 2. And that would be our final answer. So on b, I have a to the 0. What is anything to the 0 power? 1. So really, you could just kind of get rid of anything with a 0 exponent. So all we have left is b to the negative third. You'll notice we didn't even use this 8. That's why I like simplifying first before substituting in. So to make this positive, you would drop it under a 1, 1 over b to the third. Now, I would substitute in negative 2 for b. When you substitute in, you put it in parentheses. It won't make a difference on this one, but it could in the future. Now you have an odd exponent with a negative, so it's going to come out negative. And 2 to the third, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So we have negative 1 eighth. I have a couple here for you to try. So pause it, try it out. Four times four is sixteen times four is sixty-four. Now here, that eight has a positive exponent, so that would stay. The eight of the second is the only thing that moves. A is negative two. Negative 2 to the second power is positive 4. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. All right, here we go. Now we've got expressions with more than one thing. But again, get rid of anything to the zero power. Um, move your negative exponents. So here, 3y to the negative second power. 3 is 3 to the first, so it doesn't move. But the y will drop right underneath it. It's going to be 3 over y to the second. You can't simplify anything else. You can't leave negative exponents or zero exponents in your final answer. Now, negative numbers are fine. So like on b, this negative 4 up here, that's fine. You don't need to move it. But we have a negative exponent in the denominator. It's in the denominator. We're going to bring it up to the numerator and to make it positive. Now when you bring it up there, you're going to multiply it by whatever was up there. But negative 4 times k to the fourth is pretty easy to do. But I say that because if you had something like this, if you had 8 over um, 2 to the negative first, and you bring this up here, it becomes 8 times 2 to the first, which is just 16. So when you bring it up, you got to multiply it by whatever's up there. And if you move it down to the bottom, you still have to multiply it by whatever's down there. So here I see an a to the 0. Get rid of it. The x to the negative third, does it stay or move? It's got a negative exponent, so it would move to the denominator and become positive 3. The y to the fifth in the denominator, does it stay or move? It's fine. It's got a positive exponent, so it would stay down there. We have nothing up on top. We've got to put a place filler there for a fraction. So you've got to put a 1. So get rid of anything to the 0 power. Move anything with a negative exponent. Also, it's pretty normal form to put, when you have a bunch of variables, to put it in alphabetical order. So you should have your x before your y. Is it a huge deal if you don't? No. That's just, that's just proper. to get a little snotty up here. All right, what do you see on A that we can get rid of? The zero power. So get rid of that. Does the 2 need to move? No. Does the M need to move? Yeah. Drop it down to the bottom. 
negative to the positive third. R to the negative third, does it stay or move? It moves. Does the seven stay or move? It stays. So we're just gonna bring this R to the negative third, multiply it with the seven, so it'd be seven R to the third. You gotta put a place filler up top. There we go. Or C, G to the fourth stays. H to the negative sixth has to move up here. E, F, G, H, so the G should come first. So it'd be G to the fourth times H to the sixth, but you can just mush those up next to each other. Awesome. Let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, here we go. When you multiply and you have the same base, and the base is the, the big number, the exponent is the tiny number. When you have the same base, you just add the exponents. So here, these both have a base of two. You keep the base the same, keep it a two. But all you have to do is add the exponents. Five plus six is 11, that's it. So here, if we combine our fours, we have two plus five is seven. For the threes, we have negative two plus six is four. Now that's all they want us to do here. You could come up with like an actual number for that. It would be enormous. Three to the fourth is 81, four to the seventh, no idea. Huge number. All right, here we go. On C, we can combine things with the same base. So A to the fourth times A to the second, four plus two is six, times B to the fifth, just mush them up next to each other. Here, ooh, y to the second times y. They don't have anything written there, but there's an invisible one. So, so far that would be y to the third, plus negative four is negative one. You can't leave that as your final answer. Only positive exponents. So you would make it one over y to the first, which is just one over y. So I have four that I would like you to try, very similar to the ones we just did. So pause it. Go over, or try them out. I'm just gonna do them up on the board here. So 12, here, let's see. We have three to the first, which you can just write as three. We have five to the 10. Box one, circle the other. Here, let's see, M to the first, times M to the fourth would be M to the fifth times n to the negative fourth. We're gonna to have to drop that n to the negative fourth into the denominator. Over here, let's see, these are all x's. So one plus negative one, these cancel each other out. Negative three plus negative four would be negative seven. Make it positive by dropping it underneath. When you go power to a power, you just multiply the exponents. So here, you're doing four times three, which is 12. So it's just seven to the 12. Because remember, if something is to the third power, it means times itself three times. So this is really like seven and fourth, and seven and fourth, and seven and fourth. And you can do four plus four plus four, and you'll get 12. But it's just easier to just multiply the exponents. But if you forget, you can kind of backtrack on one of those. Hey, all of this stuff is to the zero power, which means it all equals one. Here we have two times negative four is negative eight. But now we have multiplication. What do you do with the exponents when you multiply? You add them. Negative eight plus five is negative three. You can't leave it x to the negative third, so put it under a one made it positive. We've done this stuff. We did a whole unit on exponents earlier this year. So pause it, try it, check back in.
when you have multiple things in the parentheses, you just have to multiply all of the exponents by the number outside. So here, like, negative 3 has its own exponent. So we have to multiply. So we have to do negative 3, 1 times 2 is 2. The x's exponent is a 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then clean some stuff up. We negative 3 to the second power. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And you got your x squared. You can't simplify anything else. Now this is different. Here, the negative was in the parentheses, so it was included each time. So it was like negative 3 times negative 3. Here, it's like we're squaring each one of them first and then making it negative at the end. So 3 squared is 9. And you got your x squared. And then we'll just make it the opposite at the end. So negative 9 x squared. That's just a little trickery. It's silly. I don't like problems like that. On C, I see y to the 0 power. What is anything to the 0 power equal? 1. Get rid of it. Here we can multiply x to the negative 6, clean it up, 1 over x to the 6. I just got to kind of see where I'm at here. All right. I got to move quick because I got a class coming in about six minutes. Last, a couple more properties. Division, subtract the exponents. So here, 8 minus 2 is 6. Here, 5 minus 5 is 0. What's anything with the 0 power? 1. Now, on C, we have to give the fourth power to both of these first. So we have A to the fifth, B to the ninth, over A to the fourth, B to the fourth. Now, I always say subtract the exponents and put them where there were more. So are there more A's in the numerator or denominator? Numerator. There's one more up there. Same thing with the b's. There's five more b's in the numerator. We don't have a denominator anymore. Everything else cancels. So here if we have 2 to the third over 2 to the first. So that would be two more twos up top. Threes, there's more in the denominator down here. There's four down here, two up there. So there would be three more twos down here, two more threes. That's what I meant. And then fives, there's two more fives in the numerator. Now we can probably clean this up. Two squared, two times two is four. Five squared is uh, 25, and three squared is nine. So that would give us 100 over nine. Nice, Let's see what else we can do. We've done this. We did it with multiplication, now it's just division. When you have a power on the outside, you just gotta give it to everyone. So this would be like, Three to the third over four to the third. Three to the third is 27. Four to the third is 64. Again, these are kind of recycled properties. Here we got to give it to everything. Two to the third. X to the ninth. Y to the third. Z to the third. The only other thing you could do is two to the third is eight. There are no negative exponents. There are no zero exponents. So you're all good. When you have it all to the negative power, what you can do is you can flip it and make it to the positive power. So this, you could make 5 over 2, and then take it all to the third power, which 5 to the third is 125, 2 to the third is 8. Here, flip it, and then take everything to the third power. So that would give you y to the sixth, 3 to the third is 27, and then you have your x to the third. Last one, and then I think I'm out of time. Flip it. It becomes 4 over 3 to the first power, which is just 4 over 3. This becomes 3y over 2x to the second power. So we have 4 over 3 here. Here we got to square everything, so we'd have 9y squared over 4x squared. And then we could cancel out 4 for 4. Two, two, three goes into nine, three times. So you'd have three y squared over x squared. That was a bit extreme. That was a little ridiculous. And that's where we're going to stop it. We got to practice this stuff.